What would happen to you if you lived your entire life serving the Lord, loving the Lord, but then you fell into sin and you didn't have enough time left to confess and repent from that sin and you died unexpectedly? Many people have asked this question and so today on The Beat, we are going to tackle that. That's coming up today on The Beat. Hey, my friend, welcome back to The Beat. My name is Alan Parr. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time here, it's a pleasure. If you want a free ebook, click the link in the description box below. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing. Hit that little bell notification so you won't miss a beat. Okay, so a while back, I did a video entitled, Is Suicide the Unforgivable Sin? To which I answered no, but many, many people in the comment section said, oh, no, 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 no. Yes, it is because suicide is the one, is the only sin that you can commit and you won't have enough time to confess or repent of that sin because it's murder. And so as soon as you kill yourself, you're dead. You don't have any time left to actually repent of that as opposed to maybe you commit adultery and then you have time to repent and confess and then you get hit by a car. Well, at least you're able to to now go to heaven. But the very act of suicide is murder, and so you won't have any time left to get yourself right with God. Okay, so this question, although it is a very valid question, definitely demonstrates that there is a severe misunderstanding as to what exactly happened at the moment that we became a believer in Christ. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the nature of our salvation so we can really better understand the heart behind this question and then talk about what confession and repentance is all about. And so the first thing that we need to understand that God did for for us that will help us answer this question is that you and I have been rescued. Now, notice what it says here in Colossians chapter one. It says here, for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now, I want you to just think about this practically for just a moment. Let's say that you went and rescued a young lady who had spent her life in sex trafficking, but then for some reason she offended you. Would you, if you say that you love them, would you then send that woman back to a life of sex trafficking? Or better yet, would you, if you say that you love her, would you allow her just sit back and watch her make the decision to return back to a life of sex trafficking? Well, if you and I wouldn't do that, then my friend, God, who loves us infinitely more than you and I could ever love another individual, how could God, after rescuing us from a life of sin, darkness and shame, make the decision to send us back to that lifestyle or just sit back blindly if he says he loves us and watch us go back to that lifestyle. The very nature that our salvation is this idea that God has rescued us implies or carries with it the idea that if God rescued us, he is not going to let anything happen to us to which would result in us going back to that lifestyle. Now, the second thing that we need to understand about our salvation that will help us really understand this question is not only have we been rescued, but we have been forgiven. Now, notice Colossians, once again, chapter two, verse 13, it says this, you were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ. Now, here it is, for he forgave what? All your sins. Wait, some or no? Oh, all. Jesus forgave all of our sins. That means past, present, and future. That means the sins that you don't know you're going to commit. That means the sins you're committing right now. That means that all the sins you committed before. That means if you get to the end of your life and you have a lustful thought, God knew that and he forgave even that sin as well. Now we have to understand that there are two levels of forgiveness in view when we talk about our salvation. This is super important. The first is something that happens at the moment of conversion. We are forgiven for all of our sins, past, present, and future. This is a one-time act that happens at the very moment that we place our faith in Jesus Christ. But 
there is also a level, a second level of forgiveness, an ongoing level of forgiveness, so to speak, in terms of us restoring our relationship, or should I say our intimacy and our fellowship, if you will, with Jesus Christ. So this is where scriptures like 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 come into play, which says, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Now, this is very similar to the relationship relationship that we have with our spouses, right? So if my wife does something to offend me, it doesn't mean that she's no longer my wife. It doesn't mean that I'm going to divorce her. But the ideal situation is that she would come to me and she would confess her sin and she would agree with me that what she did offended me so that our intimacy and our fellowship can now be resumed. But our relationship as husband and wife is not changed. It is always there and always will be from the moment of time we said, I do until death do us part. That's the same way it is with Christ, right? Just because you commit sin doesn't mean your relationship with Christ is severed. It means your intimacy, your fellowship with him. So if you get to the end of your life and you sin, that just means that from that moment until you die, you don't have the same level of intimacy or fellowship with Christ, but the foundation of your relationship in terms of you being a son or a daughter or uh, uh, one of God's children remains the same. And this leads me to the third and final analogy that I want to talk about today as it relates to our salvation to help us understand this question, which is not only have we been rescued, not only have you and I been forgiven, but my friend, you and I have been adopted into God's family. Notice what it says here in Ephesians chapter one, verse five. It says, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. See, it's super important for us to understand the analogies that the New Testament writers use to help us better understand our salvation. It says that you and I were adopted into his family. So once again, let me put it in terms that you and I can understand. Let's say that you see this beautiful baby, I mean, this, this, this beautiful child, and you make the decision to adopt them. That means that from that day forward, that is your son, that is your daughter. Now, if they do things that offend you or they disobey you, they don't listen to what you tell them to do, they may bother you, it, it may make you upset with them, but it doesn't mean that you disown them. It doesn't mean that they are no longer your son or daughter. It just means that you guys need to restore the relationship, the fellowship, the intimacy, or whatever you wanna call it. Once again, in the same way, because God loves you and I so much and he adopted us in his family, whenever we sin against him, we have to do our due diligence to confess and agree with God that we are uh, uh, offending him, if you will, but that doesn't mean that we are no longer his son or daughter. That aspect of our relationship remains unchanged. Now, finally, before I step out of here, let me leave you with a couple of other scriptures related to this idea that will also help us better understand this question. Hebrews chapter six, verse 10, one of my favorite scriptures, it says this, for God is not unjust. Let's just stop right there. God is not unfair, right? So notice it continues to say, he will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. Now, along those same lines, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, Paul says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Now watch this, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So as you read these scriptures, it should be encouraging to know, listen, that God is not unfair. It doesn't make sense for you to get saved at 20 years old. You serve the Lord faithfully for 50 years. You're sharing your faith. You're making disciples. You're going on missions trips. You're loving people. You're visiting people in the hospital. You are being faithful to your husband and your wife and you're being you're raising great children and you're doing all of these wonderful things. You're involved in church. You're using your gifts. And then at the end of your life, you are driving down the road. You see a, a picture of a beautiful woman on a billboard. You have a lustful thought 
And because you're looking at that billboard too long, you're not paying attention to the road. And then you end up getting sideswiped and you die and you do not have time to confess and repent of that sin. And God's going to send you to hell. Right? That doesn't make logical sense, right? The Bible says God is not unjust to forget all of the hard work that you've done for him simply because you had a weak moment. God does not define the totality of your life by one simple weak moment, whether it's suicide, whether it's lust, whether it's whatever it is at the end of your life, that one weak moment does not define you. So my friend, I hope this video puts to rest this idea that you and I have to do something and we have to make sure that we catch it at that exact moment whenever we sin because we're fearful that if we die just a moment later, then everything that we've done for the Lord throughout our entire life is going to be forgotten and we're gonna spend eternity in hell. It is just not biblical, nor does it reflect the loving nature of God. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave them in the comment section below and let's talk about it. If you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to share it with a friend. Also, if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe. Check out some of the other videos on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on The Beat.